So my kitchen is not quite finished, but getting nearly there. However, I harvested a pan full of okra this morning and I'm gonna get that ready to fry because as soon as this kitchen is ready, <laughs> that okra is going in the pan. Just painted these cabinet or these drawer fronts. Hey, check this out. That's cool. It's getting really close. I uh, asked you guys for help on picking my curtain fabric the other day and ended up asking my sister-in-law to make curtains out of both of them because many of you made the very good point that it's not permanent and I can, sh I can switch them out. And I actually also found some other fabrics online so I might make switching the curtains out a thing. Maya had a really good idea. Since our rod is a pipe, that is actually attached. We're going to, we'll have to take this off to put them on there, but we're actually gonna get some rings so that we can just kind of like hang the curtain on there and I can easily change it. Check out the shelving and the pantry, which we're starting to lay the floor tonight. And as soon as the floor is down, we'll put the shelves up in here. At which point we can move our food up from the garage into the pantry. I need these. And just a couple days after that, I can bring all of this stuff back in the house. Tomorrow morning, first thing in the morning, I'm shooting a garden tour. And there's so much to see. Look. Baby watermelons all over. So I made my cutting sunflower garden and I've given away quite a few bouquets. I have not taken a single one into my house, but right now that is about to change. Actually, uh, I'm just gonna cut one bouquet for my house right now and put them on the kitchen counter and we're gonna work around them <laughs> because I have been so ready for these. I've had this idea all uh, winter I wanted to do a cutting sunflower garden and then we toured the kitchen out and I just, I had this romantic notion of these sitting on my kitchen table. I actually planted more cutting sunflowers in the front and I think I may order some more seeds from hostels if they still have any and go ahead and, and when this comes out, replant it because I have enough days in my growing season to do this again. These seeds went into the ground less than 60 days ago. So if you've got 60 days left, you can grow cutting sunflowers. Uh, one thing that I'm wanting to do right now is take some individual photos of my kids. Uh, it's just an idea I've had for a really long time and I've not done it. And of course, Malia's only here 10 weeks out of the year. So, you know, I don't wanna do it incomplete. I gotta have her too. So I wanna take individual photos of each of them and blow them up real big for the wall of our living room. But I think that I'm gonna leave most of these intact. And then maybe tomorrow morning, I want to take their photos in front of these because I think that'll be really, really pretty and possibly even have somebody snap a photo of me and Jeremiah in front of them because they make such a lovely wall. And then I'm going to cut a bunch of them and give bouquets to everybody. Aren't sunflowers so cheerful? This particular variety is called Pro Cut. It's actually an F1 hybrid. And the reason I grew this one, I, I did grow multiple other heirloom varieties and I have grown heirloom varieties for years and I grow those for the bees. But this particular variety is pollenless. One of my kids is asthmatic. And so sunflowers can have a lot of pollen. They're not always a problem, but there are certain flowers like I can't bring cut lilies into the house because of allergies uh, with kids. And then having an asthmatic kid, you just become kind of aware of that. That was my idea with these. I think the reason they make them, you know, also is because making bouquets, not just for allergies, but also just the mess. You know, if you, if you take flowers that have a lot of pollen, in the house, sometimes they, they do a lot of shedding of that pollen on your table, which actually doesn't bother me just a whole lot, but the asthmatic kid factor, you gotta keep in mind. Well, that's happy. <laughs> I did multiple varieties here, as you can see. Um, I've got three different colors. I can't remember which ones they were, like just yellow, and I think one was called plum and bicolor maybe. Pretty much any sunflower seeds I can get my hands on. I'm like, yeah, I wanna grow that. Hey girls, what's up? Little ladies. I'm gonna set these down because if I take them in with the goats, they will be considered a tasty treat. Right, Miriam? Y'all look at Thorn Oakenshield. Looking like a creeper. Wow, check this out. 
I'm standing in one of the pig yards and there are goats in here because if you look back at this other pig yard back here and see all of the really tall brush and weeds that have grown up, uh, that is just the stuff that the pigs don't eat. My dog is yelling because I didn't bring him back here with me. He's so needy. Oh, this yard looked like that. It's all this tall brambles and stuff. And what happens is when there's all of this basically ground cover, tall brambles, it keeps any sort of grass from growing. And so what we did is it was time to go ahead and put the female breeder pigs back in with Gerard to breed for fall babies. And so we put them back in with him. And uh, what we will do is eventually we'll put them all out in this yard and they'll have this big yard together, but we put them back into the smaller yard. And then since this yard really needed to kind of be cleaned up of all of that brush, and since we wanted to breed some of our girls needy, not all goat breeds can breed year round, but Nubians, which these are, uh, they're not seasonal ovulators, so you can actually breed them in this time of year to have babies in the fall. And since we have such mild winters, having babies in like October or November is not an issue. We don't have to worry about uh, really extreme cold weather at that time. It'll still be mild enough for them then. And uh, a lot of times fall kids can be very hardy because they're growing up through the winter when the parasite pressure is really low. Now we have had a couple of fall kids before. More typically people breed for the spring. Uh, many people breed for like January, February. One of the reasons for that is that uh, a lot of people do showing and if you are doing like ADGA showing it's nice to have your kids a little bit older when it comes time to like fair time and show time. But the other thing is that when you're coming into the spring, when it's going to be really, really wet, especially if you live in a place that's very warm, that's like the peak of parasite time is like spring, early summer when it's super wet. I personally do not like breeding for January and February. We, uh, we don't show our goats. We have registrable goats. Some of them are registered, but that's not what we're doing this for. We're doing it for home dairy. That is our coldest time of year. And so that's the time, like breeding for January and February, I see goat breeders having to combat like kids being born in a nice. And I've just not ever really liked that. We've done it a couple of times and I personally uh, kind of try to aim for March to get the kids born and a little bit more mature before May and uh, comes with all the rain. Or I like doing fall kids like this because with our schedule and the fact that I'm so intense in the garden during this time of year, I personally like having kids in the fall where the garden is calming down and I can go out and milk and it can be more enjoyable. All that to say, we moved the goats in here because we wanted to breed them kill two birds with one stone, we went ahead and let them come in this space and eat down all that brush. We're gonna rearrange things back here and let the pigs, I'm not sure what we're gonna do. We're gonna, I think we're gonna throw another run of fence up so we can do rotational stuff, put some goats in there to eat down all of that brush and hopefully be able to get some more grass growing in the space, you know, once the light can get to the ground. You can see that the grass is coming in pretty well over here and that's where we wanna throw another line of fence up. When we built this barn up here, we split it between the fence and so there's a barn on either side. So there's a structure in this yard, there, there's a structure for that yard and then back here we have a structure for this yard. Now here are my boys. This is Ross Poldark. Hey Ross. Um, you'll see he doesn't have any ears. Down here is Dr. Ennis, also doesn't have any ears. Now this is a little weather that I got with my Nigerian dwarves and he's actually going to live with my cousin, but we were waiting for one of the Nigerian dwarf babies to be old enough to go with him. And then there's Manny the alpaca. You all look at all of these pecan shells on this uh, post here. Many of these are pecan trees over these yards, which is part of why we put the pigs in these yards underneath these trees because they eat the pecans that fall. They're very mature trees and the nuts that develop in these shells, they're really small. And I don't know how, like we haven't gone into a great deal of research on that. We've, we've picked them up and, you know, cracked them open, but there's just very little meat in them. So I don't know if there's something that we can do about that. I haven't looked into it a whole lot, but to use those trees to the fullest, we do run the pigs underneath them. They eat that and then it's not wasted. Uh, I was talking about the goats with no ears. We get comments all the time from people who are like either 
what happened to your goat's ears? You know, why did that goat not have any ears? Sometimes to the extreme of why in the world would you cut off that goat's ears, you monster? <laughs> uh, La Manchas or La Manchas are a breed of goat typically kept as a dairy goat that do not have external ears. So they just, they're born that way. And they are kind of alien looking, but I think they're really cute. Uh, we have three different breeds of goats primarily. We have La Manchas, which we have two bucks and a handful of does, four does I think, and then some of them are mixed. Uh, we have Nubians, which are these beauties with the really long floppy ears. That's what uh, Thorn Oak and Shield is. And then these three girls in this yard are some of my dearest goats that I've had the longest. I started with Nubians. And then we have our Mean Girls herd, which are Nigerian dwarfs, which those are really tiny goats. Get asked a lot, what's your favorite? Why do you keep them? We keep them for dairy. We do not keep goats for meat. Uh, you, you can do that, we just don't. So these three breeds that we have are dairy goats. They're uh, good milk producers, they're higher butterfat milk producers than others. There are some others you can get that may produce more volume but lower butterfat. And we wanted more versatile milk so we could do things like make cheese and yogurt. And if I had to pick a f favorite, that's really hard. Uh, Nigerian dwarfs are very small and they are typically kept by people who live in town or people who don't need a whole lot of milk. And I will say I love my little Nigerian dwarfs because they are so cute and they're so fun and their personalities are big. Uh, but if I were just strictly saying I want to get as much milk as possible out of my herd living out where we live there's no reason why we would need to keep small goats we have plenty of space for them uh, that would probably be my least favorite of what I have but really because they don't suit my needs as much now we're gonna keep them we like them as far as production the Nubians and the La Manchas definitely blew the Nigerian dwarves out of the water. I have La Manchas specifically that produce upwards to a gallon a day whenever they are in the peak of their milk. My, my Nubians produce about a half a gallon a day when they're in the peak, uh, but my La Manchas are from better milk lines than my Nubians, so you can get Nubians that produce more than that. Both are really great. The La Manchas, I think, have creamier milk. It really, honestly, when it's really fresh, the first day or two after it's milk tastes like half and half. Uh, the Nubians definitely have more like of an astringent flavor to their milk. It, you can more tell that it's goat's milk. The La Manchas, I don't feel like you can. I, I feel like people who don't like goat's milk or think they don't like goat's milk, I have them try that and they're like, whoa, this is really good. So we started with Nubians and actually are moving more towards La Manchas. Except these girls who will have a spot on my farm. Do you want that branch, little darling? Come here. Come get it. There we go. <laughs> this is Nestle, Miriam, and this one is Mayhem. Mayhem was the first doe to ever kid on my farm. She was pregnant when I got her. She had been bred accidentally too early, and so we weren't expecting kids, and she surprised us with them. And then Nestle is a sweet, sweet girl. And Miriam here, he's rubbing her head on my butt. I was at a, a livestock sale st selling chickens once. Someone walked by with Miriam when she was about five months old and I just had to have her. So I sold all the chickens that I brought and uh, took all the money and bought Miriam and drove home with her in the back of my minivan since I was not going there to buy goats. She pooped in the cup holder and uh, that's always been the story that we share about my crazy animal escapades. Goats are pregnant for 150 days, like right at five months. So putting these, they've, they've been back here for actually about a week and a half. We've just been busy and I haven't showed you guys, but putting them back here means that we'll have kids in November. And that would be too late for some of you, depending on where you live, but it's not really too late here. Here's my couple of my Nigerian girls. They uh, think these are for them. And they're not, no. Put these over there. Now you'll notice that the yard that the Nigerians live in, which they can be with the other herd. I guess we keep them in separate yards, but it's like growing up with some brush. So I actually need to let the big girls in here. The Nigerians are just so little that they don't eat enough to clear a space like this. With full size goats though, like you saw, in the back, I mean, that was completely overgrown like a week and a half ago when we put them in there. Come on. 
the big girls don't come running for me like they do Jeremiah because I'm not the one that usually comes with a food bucket. Uh, here's another one of my little monster girls. That's Anna. And this is Ruth. Ruth is half Sonnen, so she, her mom is Nestle, the Nubian, so she's half Nubian and half Sonnen. Nestle's one of my highest producers, so I bred her to a very high production buck. Hey, Tori girl. Hey, lovely. Here's Winona. She's one of my La Mancha does. And Winona was supposed to be bred, but there was some question on whether she was when I got her. Uh, they weren't 100% sure that she was. And I actually don't think she is. However, Maggie here, when we got Winona, she came with Ross Poldark and Maggie was open at the time, which means in heat. And we just let Ross Poldark meet Maggie. And I feel pretty sure that Maggie is pregnant. Of course, she could be like Clover, who's just fat. Breeding the goats really was not my priority this year uh, or last fall, really. We were just talking last fall about really expanding the gardens, and I knew we were gonna be working on the house and different things like that. And so when we didn't have a buck last fall, I didn't really super heavily pursue it. And I did get Winona hoping that she would be bred, but I looked yesterday on my calendar and I've had her for 155 days. So at this point, if she were pregnant, she would have had her kids because gestation's only 150, give or take a few, but she doesn't look nearly close enough. She would have to be having kids like today, any day now to be late. So I, she's, she, I just, she's not pregnant. I was noticing the way Maggie was laying yesterday though, and I was like, I'm pretty sure that she took whenever we put her in with Ross Poldark. Maggie is half La Mancha and half Nubian, so if she has babies, they'll be three quarter La Mancha, so they'll look like La Manchas. <laughs> Here's Mr. Fred looking so big with his mama Mabel. They were all asleep in the barn whenever I came over here. It's, it's getting dusky right now, and they usually go to bed about seven or so, and so uh, about right now, the sun's kind of getting low. Uh, and so they're like Fred and Mabel and all of them are just kind of slightly like, why did you wake us up? <laughs> we do get asked a lot of questions about the goats and obviously during different times of year, there's more content to share about them. Obviously when they're having babies and when they're, we're milking a lot, uh, there's more content to share, but we spend time with them every day. Our goats are really sweet and in a lot of ways they're pets, but they're also dairy animals. When we're being really intentional with it, like when we're staying on top of our breeding program and all of that, I mean, they produce a large amount of our dairy needs on our farm. And I, <sighs> People say, why goats instead of a cow? Uh, we would definitely love to get to a point where we keep dairy cows or a dairy cow. Uh, given this property that we have right now, we're really trying to like get into more rotational grazing, build up the soil. There already isn't much topsoil here because it's on a ridge, it's very, very rocky. And so growing like quality pasture is already kind of problematic. And so we want to get into more doing things rotationally. If we were to get a cow on this property, I would have to get rid of probably my alpacas and probably quite a lot of my goats in order to do that in a way that was responsible without having them in really confined spaces and having to bring in a ton of hay. And we just, we don't really wanna do that. I don't know that we will have a cow on this property. And if you're watching this video two years ago, two years from now and I'm on this property and I have a cow, I'm sure you'll tag me, but uh, I, don't, I don't see that happening because I really like my goats. If somehow we got our hands on more property, like right by here somehow, you know, adjacent, maybe we could expand in that way. But um, right now the goats meet our needs and I think they suit our property a little bit better. Hey, Gabriel. Hey, Gabriel. Hey, check it out. Pears. Man, the tree is just loaded with them. Here's my pantry shelving and the kitchen shelves.
Well, those will still look pretty good by the time I get the rest of this put together and unpacked. I'll take it. As you can imagine, there's a lot to get done around here this evening. <laughs> so I'm gonna say goodbye for now, but thank you for hanging out with me tonight. I bless you, until next time.